wow. Soldiers were dispatched to protect the school gates, but they were vastly outnumbered. <laughs> what is this crazy magic? Claire demanded. <sighs> well, now, what do we have here? A disgraced prince? We had a pretty dramatic experience reading last week's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, last week's was pretty, like, wow. Mm -hmm. But it also does make sense because of the kind of world, and I'm mm -hmm. not excusing it because it was bad. Yeah. But it makes sense it would happen. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they didn't put it in the anime, though, because, mm -hmm. like, it's kind of, it's hard to read it. Yeah. It's harder to see it. Yeah. But anyway, if you're mm -hmm. not sure what we're talking about, I love the middle of us. Um, so, yeah, we're still in volume one, and yes. we had some heated stuff happening last mm -hmm. time. A lot of stuff going with the commoner movement, and, you know, Ray doesn't really care. She's mm -hmm. like, whatever. <laughs> right. I just want Miss Claire, and whatever's good for her. Claire yeah. does care, which makes sense. She's mm -hmm. part of the, you know, the aristocrats and all that good stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we had some interesting discussion about that, and we're going to see some more stuff happening. <laughs> we're not too far off <laughs> far off <laughs> from finishing this part of the book but then we'll be taking a bit of a break um, until yeah. we get the second volume and mm. we'll be checking out the ruby one which i'm really excited about Yay! especially the recent thing going on with rooster teeth <laughs> it's so sad mm, yeah. but it will be nice to you know take a little bit of a break but i cannot mm. wait to get to volume two of this mm -hmm. but yeah so we had a lot of intense things happening and we mm. also got to see more of claire's dad which we didn't see that much of him honestly in the anime like we yeah. saw him a little bit, and then, you know... Like with the thing where Ray was becoming a maid. Yeah, we, we saw, saw that. Her that was it. I think it was last time we saw it. him yeah. in the anime. Mm. So we actually saw him when they went to go to town to get mm. supplies and everything like that. Yeah. And, yeah, and then he treated them to yummy foods and things yeah. of that nature. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, Ray continues her flirting with Claire and everything mm -hmm. like that. And But what was really interesting, too, was the discussion that you had some interesting insight, you know, about mm -hmm. the whole thing with the common movement because you's mother... She's, you know, the she's like a really well respected woman, uh -huh. and she's, I guess, the church is more for the commoner movement mm -hmm. as well. We also learned about girl popes, yeah, which was awesome, right? Uh, so that was pretty cool too. Uh -huh. He was a very interesting character. I'm very mm -hmm. excited to know more about him. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see more of Misha and you interaction as well. And that's mm -hmm. what I like about the novel is you really do get to have like more interaction with other characters that yeah. limits it when you're watching an anime, right? Yeah, twelve episodes, you can only fit so much into it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's also that too. Yeah. Yeah. But before we start and probably finish, we're going to yeah. go ahead and read some comments. Mm -hmm. So we have here Michaela, <laughs> <laughs> Gaslight, Gatekeep, Girl Pope. <laughs> the three Gs of last week. <laughs> Yeah. So, so very, very, very true. Mm -hmm. And also with Michaela, I appreciate how this series allows its main characters having genuine flaws. Mm. Seeing Claire slap Lene and being so hostile to equality for commoners, she really is a villainess, oh. and she needs to make real changes in herself before she can have a happy ever after. Mm -hmm. In this, I would agree. I know mm. in the anime, I don't really see Claire as a villainess, because uh -huh. we do see how she had some issues in the anime with uh -huh. the commoner movement, mm -hmm. but she didn't really she wasn't as, as hot-headed about it or mm. very heated as about it right mm -hmm. so she's just completely disgusted with the whole thing yeah and also she was disgusted wearing the butler outfit too mm -hmm. she didn't seem to mind so much like she did mind when ray was basically trying to order stuff and being really silly and, Claire, yeah. and, and claire's like yeah you can stop that now and couldn't stand and couldn't st the sultan person yeah 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 that too yeah oh we also had the date as well. Yay! I forgot about that because of Yay! all of the other stuff that happened. But we had the date and mm -hmm. we saw that Ray bought not one but two pendants. Yeah. Really curious to what that mm. is about. But yeah, but we but Claire also really doesn't see herself as a good person. You know, mm -hmm. there's characters and they're very like high and mighty like that, but they still mm -hmm. think they're amazing. Uh -huh. Claire doesn't see that about herself. When Ray says she loves right. her, she likes her, she's like, Why? Yeah. Right? She doesn't understand. She's, she's like, like I, I'm, know I have I'm a like... terrible personality. Yeah. Why would you like me? Why would you mm -hmm. let alone love me? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting in itself. Yeah. So I definitely agree. You wanna get into Ginger Cat? Ginger Cat Dunder uh, Dunderscore. <laughs> <laughs> underscore O two Girl King. Girl Prince, Girl Pope. There's also Yu's mother, the Girl Cardinal. Oh, Girl Cardinal? Yeah! I find it interesting seeing the differences between the anime and the book, where things have been toned down, like Claire slapping Lene out, yeah. right? Yeah. And that, to me, made sense once I thought about it, that they would have left that out of the anime, because the anime, we got 12 episodes, mm -hmm. And the books go five volumes, mm -hmm. so there's a lot more time for yeah. Claire to start from number one Claire yeah. and then make her way into, like, evolving into a different kind of 
maybe more mature person. So we haven't seen that yet because we just saw herself in it. But we'll see what's to come. It does seem like there's more time. Well, to I also feel like character. too when we do, because we will get to Claire's version of mm-hmm. this. Yeah, I, I I feel like she will have like possibly like an inner monologue of mm. that she couldn't believe she just did that. That that was really like mean. Um, pop pop maybe maybe not. Maybe. But hope for she does mm. right because like that was very surprising. Yeah, you know I know Lene has like, wait what? Yeah, basically wait what? Yeah. But, I'm sorry. Go ahead, keep on arranging ginger to cats. Was there anything you had to say? Uh, not really. Okay. Just that. Just that. Uh, I'm in love with the villainess. She's so cheeky for a commoner volume two oh. recently came out. So I'm rereading volume one before studying volume volume two. Coincidentally, when this video got posted, I just read the parts of the novel that coincided with what you were reading. Example, the festival, shopping trip, the carriage ride. It was interesting to read these scenes from Claire and Misha's POV. Then hear the same oh, scenes from Ray's point of so view. So you okay. get Misha's point of view in Claire's yeah. book. Oh, I'll be excited to see that one, yeah, too. Yeah, I like Misha. Me, too. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Sonia, still rereading the light novel with you is a special experience. Aww. Yeah. Never getting over Ray and Claire. Besides, mm-hmm. the story is the kind of stories that makes you want to read more every time you read some of it. Oh. Can't wait until you reach a certain part where you'll find out something about Prince Yu. Prince Yu. I'm excited. For real. Okay, Blue Butterfly 015 says, You beat me to Girl Pope, <laughs> but we can do more. Girl Butler, Girl Knight, yes! yes! I'm here for it. Speaking of the Girl Pope, that's a reaction worth looking forward to, even if it's a ways off. So we're going to get more of the Girl Pope. More of the Girl Pope. Mm-hmm. And Dennis. Uh, Dash, rather, OG to PJ. I really loved how political the novel got. Made me devour them whole. Can't wait till you get past the anime stuff. I'm excited to get past the anime stuff as well. I don't... The political thing's really interesting, right? Because Mm -hmm. it touches it in the anime, right? Mm -hmm. But to see it, like, more involved in the novel, it's kind of like, it really makes you think, like, what is Ray's stance on? She doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I would be curious to see, though, what other others, like, we know what you stance is. Mm-hmm. I don't really know about Thane, because he, he did actually seem to agree to a point, but then he was like, absolutely not, I'm on Claire's side. Oh. But Rod, I just don't really know. I don't remember his stance on it. Yeah. I'd like to know Misha's stance, because here mm-hmm. she is, a former noble. Like, mm-hmm. what does she think about this, right? That's a good point. So I'd like mm-hmm. to know. Mm-hmm. But without further, oh, this time, we don't have tea, everybody, but we've got something better than water. Well, tasty here. So this is a lemonade with watermelon. And no, it was man. Bogo. Oh, and it's delicious. Oh. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead. Editing Jenny and KB here. And while we were reading, or you were reading, <laughs> the light novel for I'm in Love with the Villainous Volume 1, I mentioned my Minari stands, which I had two of, and I had another one on the way. Well, exciting news. The day after... That video was filmed. We got my final stand. We're pretty sure it's not here. We expect that that's I will laugh so hard if it's not my audio. I can't think of anything else that this would be this time. And what she's referring to is the time that I was gifted very kindly a uh, Sailor Uranus figure. And I thought, oh, it's my Minari, it's, it's here. And it was Sailor Uranus, uh, which is like one waifu, other waifu, happy about both. Um, but now this one's here. So we are going to unbox it. Yay! An envelope it? An envelope it. Oh. I have the scissors. Scissors. Do, 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 do. Be careful. Precious cargo. Listen. <laughs> I told you I wasn't going to tear it up yet. Okay. <laughs> we should do like, put like a string at the end of it. <laughs> And put it in front of Jenny and see what you she does. You hold it up. I have to, like, grab it. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it needs to be opened another time. Oh, well, there you go. So tell, tell us about how long are you waiting for this? How long have I been waiting? It's been, <laughs> it's been at least a month. Longer. Longer than that. It's probably two months. Probably three months. Maybe three. Yeah. Whenever you finish Villainous, you ordered it not yeah, too soon after that. That's true. Yep. So it's been a few months. And I was, like, starting to wonder, where is this fig... No, well, it's not figure. Then where is the stand at? But there's bubble wrap. And there's therapeutic bubble wrap. Ooh, it's very well packaged. I'm going to play with this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got this from Goods Republic, just like the last one that Let I Let me unboxed. guess. There's even more. There's even more. Our special care to packaging. 
Yeah, here's the I would list say of absolutely stuff. yes, especially yes. care to packaging. Especially <laughs> care to packaging. Because we have bubble wrap again. My bubble wrap. It and looks like it's gonna be a little bit on the little and cute side. So I'm excited. Ah, let me take it out. Let me take no, it out. No, I want the bubble wrap. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna play with it. Oh, <laughs> the bubble wrap. I'm gonna play with it. <gasps> this isn't as tiny as I thought it might be. I was like, this is probably gonna be really small. It's freaking adorable, you all. Are they close okay, now? here she is. She's on a macaron, right? She's on a macaron. She is so flipping adorable. You know, I'm gonna open it. Collectors everywhere are gonna cry. Especially because I think. When you looked up, they're no longer, either they can't get her, it's no mm. longer selling, or it's out of print. Something like that. Something like that. Let's see if I can open it. Yeah, it's, it's opening. It's opening! <laughs> the heavens rejoice. <laughs> Manaria is being revealed. <gasps> she is so flipping adorable. Okay, the little stand is underneath. Here she is, I freed her! She's so cute! She has her little wink and her little red eye and her little silver hair. Look at her! Her legs are crossed. I'm like, her legs crossed. Yes, her legs are crossed. Her little chibi round face. Just like everything. This just makes me happy, okay? I can tell. It, it just makes I me happy. Tell. But she needs her she's stand. She's so cute! Oh, she's drinking a little tea cup. She's like thirsty. She's like, yeah, <laughs> Plots, all kinds of things that Ray won't approve of. <laughs> Ray's like, did you have to do it like this? She's like, sips tea. Yeah, yes, yes, I think I did. Oh my goodness. Yes. How cute is she? She's her really little cute. wink sitting on a macaron. So yep. I will find her a spot. They also had a keychain of that, her like that as they well. They did, yes. Mm -hmm. There's so one. there's keychains too of the smaller ones that Jenny has. So if yeah. you prefer a keychain, you get a keychain. Yeah. Well, or you can just admire the beauty and majesty and adorableness of her here on the screen, okay? She's just really cute. Yay! <laughs> Get yourself off. Situated nice mm -hmm. and cutely. Yep. Let's see. Where exactly did we leave Wolf here? Probably here. Where there's some diamonds. That's also true. Let's see. <laughs> I wonder if there's going to be more pictures. It looks like there's a darker page. There very well could so, be. So, probably more pictures to come. Commander, is it bad? What's the ruckus? The boy who brought the message to the academy night meeting was pale. Mm. It seems a noble student has heard a commoner student. Uh-oh. Uh. What? The room went silent and suddenly went alive with action. Tell us details. Right. Apparently this afternoon, the noble Dede Murray and his commoner boy got into a fight in the courtyard. Mm. Dede did. You perked up. Dede was your attendant. He'd been the dealer mm. we played cards with you. Mm. Once someone became an attendant to the royal family, they were promoted to the ranks of the nobility themselves. Oh. So that's why he wasn't around. Mm. Let's hear the report, Thane prompted. Yes, please. Right. It started a simple disagreement, but more and more students nearly got involved and now it grew heated. Then one commoner made an insulting remark about Master Yu, oh. and Dede lost his patience and attacked him with magic. Oh. Dede would never do something so... You trailed off. Oh. Perhaps the facts are reported or, or grappled more will engage in time, but this is much clearer. The commoner was seriously injured and has been taken to the church clinic, and Dede has presented himself of his own accord to the army at tribunal. Oh. You stared in disbelief, his princely composure gone. Oh. Rod jumped in. You, you go to army headquarters and find Dede's condition. Mm. That's fine, right, Commander? Yes, that'll be helpful. If he's in the middle of interrogation, you likely won't be able to intervene, but if he's attained after only his family or master, you will be allowed to see him. Warwick mm. added, Given the circumstances, Lambert will escort you. Yay! Lambert! Great! <laughs> <laughs> you and Lambert quickly left the meeting room. No, I'd like to hear more about the commoner's side of the story, too, Rod said. Oh. <laughs> Shall I go? Perhaps they will talk to me as well as a commoner and myself, Misha volunteered. Yay, Misha. Well, she looked collected as ever. She had Odd be a torn up inside. Mm. No matter how you sliced it, you was involved in how mm. this played out. It was clear she wanted to help him if she could. Aww. Uh, oh, who is this? Oh, the, maybe it's the commander. I can't allow you to go alone, Misha. Claire, go with her. <gasps> Understood. Then I will, too. I went wherever Claire did. Thanks. Let's review the situation and take action when necessary. With any luck, we can nip this bud before it escalates. Oh. Commander Lorik was head of the knights, but it was Rod who assumed the mantle of the leadership like these. Mm. Now the commander understood the necessity of this and left the discussion up to Rod. Now mm. everyone, move. The clinic where the injured student had been taken to was run by the spiritual church. 
It changed. It charged for its services on the sliding scale. The wealthy paid high prices, and the poor paid nearly nothing. Mm. And consequently, the church had earned massive goodwill from the common folk. Mm. There were several such clients in the kingdom, but this one was located in the academy grounds. Being part of an institution where magic was practiced and the academy knights fought monsters, it was equipped with state-of-the-art technology and personnel. Partly because most of student clients were nobles, of course. Oh. When we arrived at the clinic and asked to see the student, we were told he was undergoing treatment. Oh. We took positions in the waiting room. The commoner probably said something outrageous. It'd be his own fault, Claire said as we wait. See, this is a difference, too. Claire, though. I do think in the anime, Claire did feel bad for the commoner. Did she not? I think it's she did. It's been a bit since we watched since it. Since we watched it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like she did. I think she was actually shocked that this happened. I oh, think. Oh, okay. But isn't attacking him with magic an excessive response? Misha said. A commoner shouldn't be mouthing off to a noble in the first place. <gasps> Imagine if it were the other way around. When did mo- commoners get so disrespectful? Oh. So, if the roles were reversed, it would be fine? <gasps> oh! I asked. Called out. Well, I mean, a noble shouldn't say anything untoward others, but... But you're welcome to speak to me in whatever way you want. Please swear if... I don't... Uh, wait. Please swear at me, at me all you'd like. Swear at me. I thought we were like... getting serious for a second, Ray. Right? Watch Just yourself. Just when you think it's getting serious. Claire had to feel the gravity of the situation because her response was more measured than usual. Oh, well. We were finally allowed to see the injured boy. We grasped... We, we gasped involuntarily at the sight of him. Oh, I think she was kind of like that until she saw the, the state he was in, and then she felt bad. Mm, More of his body was wrapped in bandages than wasn't. Even mm. Claire, who had just said he deserved it, was at a loss for words. Yeah. Not even she could dismiss the severity of the condition. Mm. I'm Ray Taylor. What's your name? Matt. Matt Mont. Hi, Matt. We're here on behalf of the Academy Knights to hear what happened to you. I know you must be in pain, but would you lend us a few minutes of your time? No. Mm. Oh, no. Matt said immediately. The Academy Knights are on the side of the aristocracy. I have nothing to say to you. Oh. The Knights are on the side of the students, Misha said mm, in a calm voice. Nice, Misha. Spare me your stance and leave me alone, <gasps> Matt said and laid down. Oh. So this is what they call the ship without a port, huh? Mm. Hey, Matt, I said. I don't want to put it this way, but it would be better if you talked to us. Commoners like you and I are at a disadvantage when we're up against aristocrats. Right? There's no justice mm. in this country. This is why we need to bring about... Ow! Oh. It seems my words have struck a nerve. Uh, let's see here. Matt, settle down. We're here to precisely because we want to help keep anything that's happening again. Will you please help mm. us? He was quiet. Please, mm. I said again. I tried to look him in the eye with my most honest, open expression I could muster. Mm. Matt reminded me quiet for a few moments, but finally he opened his mouth. It was it was just an argument at first, he started. Matt was a member of the commoner movement whom you had met with. He tried to request the church's split support, but you had turned him down. Oh, his fellow wow. members had confor- confronted him, telling him it couldn't be helped. But the words did little to make Matt feel better, and he fell into deep depression. That's mm. when Day Day told Matt to stay away from you. That's interesting, because you is, like, on their side. I think it's kind of hard, right? Because you is on their side, but you mm. also he also has to be careful, right? Mm. Because, like, he's part of royalty. Right. right? His, his mom married into royalty, mm-hmm. and, you know, she seems to be a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. So while I think that they want to help the commoners, they also have to be, like, okay, they kind of have to be, I think, play both fields or both uh, sides. I, yeah. I feel like it's like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, let's see... What's so special about an aristocrat? Do you realize how ridiculous it looks to we commoners mm-hmm. for you to hoard all that wealth and power? <sighs> and now you're saying we're not even allowed to petition the prince? Matt had fumed at Dede, who responded with, until he thought Lord Yu was being insulted. Mm-hmm. Dede asked Matt how he could be so ungrateful as to say such things about nobility who protected him. Mm-hmm. A crowd started gathering around us. The argument soon turned into a debate over the very existence of est- uh, aristocrats and commoners. <gasps> the discussion heated up. It made me so angry. And then I said it. He said that the royal family was a parasite, preying on the commoners to survive. Oh. You said what? It was our noble re- representative, Claire, who was the most shocked by these words. Uh-huh. Miss Claire, this is not the time. I understand how you feel, but it's besides the point. But I will listen to your protest later. Right now, our job is to listen to Matt. Ugh. Somehow, uh. Claire would brought herself under control. I would mm-hmm. pat her on the back later. Not that she would let me. Uh-huh. And then, what did Day do? He looked upset the entire time. But when I said that about you, it was like a switch had been flipped. He pulled out his wand, and before I knew it, I was encased in a ball of flames. <gasps> Matt hugged himself and shuddered, as if reliving the moment. When I woke up, I was in his bed. It was only then I realized what he did to me. His face was full of frustration. He looked up at us. If the Academy Knights are really are on our side of the students, then please make sure he's punished. Mm. Let's see. Uh... That's it's ultimately up to the Academy to decide how to handle it. We have to hear our data side of the story, too. Mm-hmm. But we'll do everything in our power to make sure you aren't silenced. Mm-hmm. Please, Matt said before sitting into his bed. Let him rest. We got what we needed. Mm. This is bad, Rod groaned. 
I know, right? <sighs> yeah, I mean, this is this is bad, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, they, they, it does not look good for either side at the present mm-hmm. moment. With people blocking the doors today, too, the Academy won't be able to function if this keeps up, Lambert said bitterly. Where the country yard incident had escaped the academy and spread through the general populace. Mm. Furious crowds were staging protests outside the walls, though they hadn't yet tr- tried to batter down the doors. There was no telling what would happen if they weren't appeased and soon. It is ex- Yikes. There's excuses, but le- little far-fetched, too, Thane sighed. Dede had told you and Lambert that he only pulled out his wand to scare Matt, not intending to use it. Ma- well, when you know, you know, uh-huh. to cause him such serious injury. But Matt had been injured, burned all over his body, in <gasps> uh-huh. fact. So that story was hard to believe. Mm-hmm. What's the word among the citizenry? Let's see. They're now saying an arrogant aristocrat committed grievance violence against a commoner for no reason. Mm. That's not far from the truth, but it doesn't help the matter, Rod mm. said, stroking his chin. And used bodyguard attendant, Dede was a skilled ma- ma- magic user who had undergone strict training. Huh. He had rigid self-control and better skill with his magic than most people, mm. so why had he flown off the handle at such a seemingly little cause? Mm-hmm. Dede would never do something like that, he was adamant. Let's see... And yet he did. I examined it as magic wand, but there was no evidence of malfunction or tampering, said Lambert. Lambert. Like I said before, Lambert specialized in development of magical tools. His opinion had weight. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we really care about what Lambert's is opinion. going on? Yu hung his head. I admit it was hard to see the usually cheerful prince so upset. Aww. Well, moping around will do us no good. We need to decide our next course of action, Rod said. <laughs> Rod, at least your Rod voice makes me laugh amongst all this, like, <laughs> angst and stress, okay? Indeed. Claire agreed. Uh, let's see. Make sure you have some drinks, too. Yeah, I'm trying to see who's reading it, because some people don't have, like, that's just reading. Like, right, it just says, like, what they said and not who mm-hmm. said it. Yeah. <laughs> Me takes a few takes like three gulps. I mean, you know. <laughs> to be honest, the situation outside the school is beyond us. It's up to the government, possibly the military, to handle. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, the Academites were a small organization, and they were only so many handful of kids that could do, in fact, uh, face of mass protests. Mm-hmm. Let's focus on what we can do. How is the mood going among the student body? Pretty much the same as outside. We have the commoners on one side and the high and mighty aristocrats. They re- mm. resent the other. The commoners have even been... Uh, let's see here. Oh my god, that was Lambert. Oh, oh. oh. oh now you're right, Lambert. Okay, Lambert. Pretty much the same as the outside. We have the commoners on one side and high and mighty aristocrats. They mm. re- resent the other. The commoners have even been disrupting lectures by directly criticizing nobility, Lambert mm. a- answered Rod. How do you think we should address this? Rod asked him. Honestly, I'm not sure, Lambert said. Perhaps we'll settle down if some disciplinary action is taken against Day Day. Oh, mm. look who's pushing for the disciplinary action! That was Lambert. Yep. <sighs> what sort of punishment are we talking? <sighs> That's a tricky question. It would be one thing if he were a low ranking noble, but Day Day's mm. family are mid tier nobles with connections to the church. If his mm. punishment is too harsh, we'll see backlash from both those quarters. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah, we didn't really get to know that much. Like, Dede was obviously some kind of noble, right? We oh. knew that from the anime, but we didn't actually know, like, what his status was mm. and everything else, so. We need to rewatch this part, because as we're going through <laughs> it, I'm like, oh, yeah, Dede was his name, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Mm. The fact remained that the injuries Matt suffered could well have killed him. The church had needed to employ a high-level water attribute healer as well as mm. numerous precision magic tools around the clock to save his life. Wow. Holy hell, that's crazy. Yeah. And what of the noble students? How have they reacted? No public demonstration yet, but there is some muttering about not granting commoners any more favors. Mm. It's finally getting dangerous, Rod muttered bitterly. Miss Claire, what does he mean? I asked. Mm. Is your head screwed on right? <gasps> Listen up. If the situation tears any further, we'll lose our points of compromise. Uh, Point of compromise? Mm. The middle ground that both nobles and commoners can accept. Mm. For the time being, Thane, you and I will speak with the other noble students. A few words from their future king ought to make some sense, mm. Rod said, crossing his arm. Misha and Ray, <laughs> you convince the commoners that we're taking charge of the situation. Let's make sure it does escalate further. I'll do my best, said Misha. Mm, uh, Misha. Uh, I wasn't good at either politics or negotiations. <sighs> Don't complain. This is a direct order from Master Rod, so give it absolutely everything you've got. <laughs> then, Miss Claire, please tell me how to do my best with love. Stop acting a fool. This is an emergency. <laughs> I'm completely serious. If you don't say it, I won't go. Oh. <laughs> Why not, Claire? Save for her. Rod tossed me a lifeline with a bitter smile. Uh-huh. What are you saying, Master Rod? Come on, hurry up. You're going too far. <laughs> hurry! I was persistent. It was a bit mean. Do your... Best Ray, oh. Claire said reluctantly. <laughs> that wasn't enough, love. One more time. That's enough. Get to work. I gave in. A few days.
guys later, we had done everything we could to mitigate the academy internal conflict. Mm -hmm. The aristocrats had been persuaded to settle down by the princes, mostly Rod, but the commoners remained heated. Mm -hmm. There were far fewer scholarship students and nobles, Mm -hmm. but public opinion was in the commoners. Mm -hmm. Protest demonstration continued outside the school on a daily basis, only reigniting satisfaction on the aristocrats' side as well. Mm -hmm. Day when Day Day's punishment was to be announced finally arrived. The Mm -hmm. people from all walks of life on the courtyard where the incident had taken place awaited the proclamation when the announcement was finally made. Here we go. Here it is. Notice. Let it be known that Day Day Murray shall be imprisoned for one week's time. Mm. This is not right, Claire blinked. It was laughably light sentence. Shouts and screams rose around as if the commoners were echoing my thoughts. Claire. Right? Miss Claire, please come this way. This place is about to be dangerous for nobles. Then I pulled Claire's sleeve. But we have to calm them down. That's not possible right now. They want blood, and they're not going to listen. Ugh. Uh, Yeah, right? Miss Claire, Lenny's right. We need to get out of here now. Together, we somehow pursued a Claire to leave. mm. What's going to happen now? She muttered as we departed, giving voice to precisely what all the students of the academy were thinking. mm. Yikes. I mean, yeah, I I agree. That... That's, you know, one week's time for almost killing a student? Uh, yeah. yeah. That is... Uh, uh, Granted, we know why this happened because week. of the anime, but still, like, uh, that's a pretty light sentence for sure. Yeah. The Academy lost the ability to function. The mm. protests and the gates grew more violent by the day, and the screams of the, the assembled citizens were like the roar of thunder. Wow. Soldiers were dispatched to protect the school gates, but they were vastly outnumbered. Mm. Fragile equilibrium tilted even more danger. The academy will likely close until things settle down. The academy knights were gathered once more. Rod stood in front of the room, telling us the school's official decision. They determined they couldn't guarantee the safety of the noble students under the present wow. circumstances. If that's how they feel, they should have given Day Day a different dif- different punishment, Claire said furiously. <laughs> well, Even if yeah. she pure, was a pure bred aristocrat with a strong prejudice against commoners, that lightness of the sentence was unacceptable. Mm. It was a bit weird, Thane said. Yeah. What was that, Thane? Just like Claire said, it doesn't mm. make sense. Indeed, coming mm. at a time of such conflict between aristocrats and commoners, it should have been obvious that the light sentence would only fan the flames. Mm. It was a bad move no matter which way you sliced it. Mm-hmm. About that, it seems they had a request from some of the nobility, Lambert said bitterly. Mm. Meaning, may that some aristocrats who were unhappy with the common movement saw for Dede's punishment to be reduced. Mm. Rod frowned at the students. In just when I thought things were starting to see sense. Mm. It is our fault. It is. We thought the noble kids had been pacified by the princes, but instead mm. the smoldering satisfaction had been redirected in the worst way. Oh. It seems like the church has had it. Yeah, I know, right? <sighs> yeah, this is a uh, pretty. I mean, we don't have that much left, so this is pretty. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm really curious how it's going to end. I am too. Yeah. It seems like the church had a hand in reducing Day Day's punishment too, Lambert mm. said. What do you mean? I thought they supported the commoner movement. Mm. Me too! <laughs> Your face out. You're like, what I like is going to do. Misha asked. Well, that's just politics, <laughs> Rod answered with disgust. What the church really wants is just, is to supersede the royal family. Mm. I see. They support the commoner movement in public and the nobility mm. behind the scenes. They probably think pitching the social class against each other gives them a chance to swoop in and seize power. Oh, no. Oh, that was you. I'm sorry, oh, you. Oh, oh, they support the commoner move, but it's public and the nobility behind the scenes. Mm. They probably think pitting the social classes against each other gives them a chance to swoop in and seize power from both yeah. the royal family and nobility. Yeah, you boy. chimed in. It sounded ridiculously wicked when you said it out loud. Mm-hmm. A power struggle, Thane mm. said bitterly. The church was respected and powerful force. Much as it claimed to be motivated by charity and the desire to improve people's lives, the people at top were a formidable political force. Mm. Let's see. It's clearly the church that's most benefits from this feud for fewer. You. Uh, feud? The feud? No. For, for this, you, Queen Rishi, isn't involved in this, is she? I hope Wait, not. what did it say? I got confused. It's clearly the church is the most benefits from this furor. You, you, Queen Ricci, isn't involved in this, is she? I hope oh. not, but I don't know. I can't say what my mother is thinking, mm. he mumbled. He probably didn't want to believe his mom had had a hand in this, but he couldn't rule out the possibility, <sighs> especially since it was known fact that she wanted him to ascend the throne of possible... Okay, because Rod, dun, dun, isn't dun. technically Rod the first in line? I think he was. The plot thickens. Yeah, right? Rod is the eldest. Yeah. He's supposed to be the next king. That's why he acts like he does. Have you spoken to her? Oh. No, I requested a visit, but she refused. Mm-hmm. Isn't she your mother? Thane demanded. Even so, she's a queen. It's not that simple, Thane. There was tension in the air. Mm, the church may be okay. trying to sow to score between the princes, too. Claire suddenly blurted out. The princes whipped around to look at Claire. A moment passed, and they each began a little by little to soften. <gasps> she's right. We can't turn against each other now. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
either way, uh, let's see here. Whoops, I skipped a thing. But, <laughs> no, that was right. Okay. Either way, there isn't much the Academy Knights can do. Oh, wait, mm. that was Ron. <laughs> It's funny to think of him talking like Claire. Either way, there isn't much Academy Knights can do, said Rod. Other than assist military, if it comes to that. All we can do is sit and wait, Claire said. Everyone nodded agreement. Miss Claire, I have a favor to ask of you, I said on their way home through the dusk of the meeting. What is it? Mm-hmm. Once you retire to your room tonight, please stay there until tomorrow night. No! It's happening! It's happening! What's this all of a sudden? I hate when you do that, Claire peered suspiciously at me. Uh-huh. They went out to school. Class may be canceled, but we still have the Academy night work to do. Please take the day off. I can't take a day off in the middle of emergency like this. This is exactly why we joined the Academy Knights, mm. she said, looking at me like I was crazy. Ray, is there a reason you're asking this? Len, I asked me, but I couldn't tell her. Mm. Explaining would just complicate things more. Mm. There's no way you could get the day off, I asked. I don't want to. <sighs> I see. Then I'm left with no choice. Claire looked at me quizzically. I pressed my fingertips to her forehead. What are... Before she could finish her sentence, Claire collapsed. Miss Claire, what did you do, Ray? Let I rushed between Claire and I as I to guard her from me. Just like Lambert, her hazelnut eyes glitter with caution. Oh. It's okay. She's just sleeping. One of the water attribute spells could put people into sound sleep. It was meant to allow them to recover their energy and heal from injury. But with a little added power, it could work on a healthy individual, too. Mm. Why would you do something like this? There's going to be a riot tonight, huh? You must hide the door towards Miss Claire. Whatever mm. happens, don't do anything stupid. What do you mean? Lene, I said, ignoring her question. Do you like Miss Claire? Why would... Just answer me. Huh? Of course I like her. I've served her far longer than you have. Mm. Then I'm entrusting you to her. Lene, I'm putting my faith in you. I said, turning to return to the academy building. Uh. Wait! Lene called after me. Are you the same as me? It was purposely ambiguous question. Only someone who knew what she meant could answer that. No. I see. There was an awkward silence. We both knew that answering in the negative meant I knew what she was talking about. Please take care of Miss Claire, I said. Okay. With that, I headed Whoa, back towards I'm the confused. academy. Are you the same as me? Do you know what that means? Forbidden love? Oh. Okay. That's what I got from it. I could be wrong. Okay. But I kind of okay. get that from it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it'll be explained. Right. Because I was like, I feel like I'm already supposed to know what she's talking about, but I don't. So, right? With that, yeah. I headed back towards the academy. There was a great deal left for me to do. Mm. I'm sorry, Ray. Miss Claire. I pretended not to hear the weakness in Lene's voice as I walked away. That night, the school gate was broken down. Ooh. What's going on? The main gate is down. A mom is pushing into the school. Mm. The young nobles are in danger. Protect the dormitories. I can mm. evacuate the staff, too. Hold the line until reinforcements arrive. I could hear soldiers yelling outside my room where I stood and wait. Oh. It was around 11 p.m. at night. Eventually, I heard footsteps approach and stop in front of the room. Mm. The door was unlocked and opened. A figure entered, moving towards the back. Were you going to take advantage of the opportunity, Mr. Lambert? I said. Lambert stopped in his tracks. He turned to look at me. Ray Taylor. Mm. Through the laboratory that belonged to the Academy Research Department, I picked the lock and snuck inside. (sighs) Oh, the bell that controls monsters. That was one of your inventions, right, Mr. Lambert? Mm. What are you doing here? I came to stop you. I have no idea what you're talking about, Lambert (sighs) responded coolly. Mm. I hear the uproar and came to check on my precious magic tools. Mm. You tampered with Day-Day's wand prior to the incident in Courtyard, didn't you? Lambert's eyes narrowed. Called he was out. right about his attendant. Day-Day would never attack someone as he apparently had mm. Matt. Personally aside, it was unfathomable that he would fail so catastrophically to control his magic. Mm-hmm. As a resident spe- specialist, you were ideally positioned to make adjustments to people's magical tools. You deliberately rigged Day-Day's wand so it would explode. Uh, what are his accusations? Uh, the wand was examined and no def- defects were found. But you were the one who tested to that, mm. Mr. Lambert. You intended to accompany you to visit Day-Day in custody, even if Commander Lorg hadn't ordered you to, didn't you? Uh, this silenced Lambert. You've been instigating the conflict between nobles and commoners in the Academy, mm. haven't you? What proof do you have? Uh, I have no proof. But I know everything. <gasps> this was all acknowledging I had acquired by planning revolution, so I had oh. no divisive evidence. Still, I knew Lambert's plan. In the midst of the chaos, he would activate his monster-controlling bell and try to call a powerful monster down to the school. Mm. In the game, the heroine had her chosen prince save the school. But naturally, I much preferred we avoid that dangerous scenario mm. than altogether. Therefore, I take steps to prevent it. Mm-hmm. Everything? Lambert asked. I know you don't care about the commoner movement. Yeah. The Russian Company was the largest merchant business in the kingdom, commissioned by the government to oversee the ev- excavation and distribution of magical stones. If royalty and nobility who compromised that government were disposed of, their business would disappear with them. Mm. 
Then why would I... Why would I do any of these things you're accusing me of? Because Lene's life is at stake. Oh. Certain forces have told Lambert they would kill Lene if he didn't do what they said. Mm. My sister is certainly important to me, but do you really think I would endanger the rest of my family only for her? Mm. If she were only your sister? Oh. This time, Lambert's eyes widen. He couldn't have imagined I knew what I'd just implied. Oh. How much do you... I told you everything. <gasps> Lambert was in love with Lene, not as a sister, but as a woman. To uh. save her, he had no choice but to do as the people holding her hostage directed, mm. even if it meant putting their family's livelihood in danger. Oh. Mr. Lambert, please give up. I can't do that. Mm. Mr. Lambert, he's a terrible man. If I fail, he'll kill Lene. His fears were writ large on his face. I will protect Lene. How? I'll talk to him. He can't be reasoned with. Mm. There was a hint of self-scorn in Lambert's face as he spat the words. He must have had this debate with himself many times before. Mm. Please, trust me. I can't. Mm. If you don't stop, I'll stop you. I arm myself with my magic wand. <sighs> I won't let you, said a familiar voice. I turned, a chill running down my spine. Oh. There in the door stood Lene, accompanied by several men. <gasps> One held Claire's still unconscious body. A knife pressed to her neck. She released a small moan. Oh, Claire. Lene, I muttered. I'm sorry, Ray. You must let my brother go. <gasps> Lene, think it over. No. Mm -hmm. I didn't respond. I wanted to trust Lene. I wanted to believe she hadn't been lying about caring for Claire. Mm -hmm. But maybe it was impossible for love to alter fate. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray, move over there, Lene directed me. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can go, but it won't help, I said. What? I already broke the bell, just in case. What? Lambert slipped past me and ran back of the room. He opened the cabinet and withdrew the shattered halves of the bell. Mm -hmm. What have you done? I'd known it was possible that Lene would take Lambert's side. Breaking the bell had been many forms of insurance. Mm. That's enough. Please give up, Lambert. Lene, I said. Brother. Lambert said nothing, seemingly overcome by despair. Lene oh. rushed to his side. Uh. Oh. Oh, it's this guy. Let's nope. see if I give him a crazy voice. Hey, <laughs> we can't have this, said one of the <laughs> men in bright, cheerful tone that didn't suit the mood. His face was concealed by a black mask. Who was mm. that? This scene had never happened in the game. Without the magic bell, there's nothing we can do. Let me see it. The man took the bell from Lambert's subjected uh. hand. Return! My eyes widen as I watch two halves of the bell mend back together as oh, time bends no. around. What is this magic? This should do it, yes? <laughs> yes. Lambert sounded like he couldn't believe his eyes, but mm. he timidly took the bell and tried to activate it. I won't mm. allow it! I cried. Ray, don't move. Don't make me hurt Miss Claire, Len I said sharply. <gasps> when I looked at the single red line that ran down Claire's neck, Something inside me snapped. Uh -uh. I tried desperately to keep my bearings, despite the anger flooding through me. This was all my fault. I'd been so convinced mm. that because I knew the game, I could control what happened. But now Claire was in danger because of me, and I had to do something. Mm -hmm. Just as I was starting to despair, I heard another familiar voice. To think you could change the commoner's law on your own with flagrant, arrogant mistake. The voice <gasps> echoed to men and were enveloped in flames. Their <gasps> screams roared raggedly through Inferno. Ooh. Even your screams are vulgar. It suits you, thieves. Uh. Miss Claire! <gasps> I don't get all that's going on here, but it sounds like the Erosians uh. were behind it. Claire stifled, then laughed. Apparently she'd been awake for a while. That's unfortunate, uh. Lene. Lene was silent. Mm. Shame kept her head down. She refused to meet Miss Claire's eyes. The rosy and siblings, stick to the plan. The flames were suddenly extinguished, and the cheerful voiced man spoke once more. <gasps> the other men had collapsed, save for one individual who remained standing untouched. Do your jobs, and I will help you escape overseas, the man said. <gasps> then you can change your names and live as lovers, not siblings. Oh. I thought he sounded just like a serpent tempting Adam and Eve. Yeah. Don't listen to him. Surrender, mm. Claire told them. I'm sorry, Miss Claire. We can't turn back now. And with that, Lambert yeah. activated the bell. The monster who was manifested within the workshop looked like uh -oh. a work of avant-garde artist. Oh. artist. With a lion head, a goat torso, a tail of a viper, bat wings, it was even larger than water slime we previously encountered. Uh -huh. Is that a chimera? Claire screamed. The chimera uh -huh. was a monster from Greek mythology, said to breathe fire and possess a supernatural <gasps> strength. So Legend intense. told its flames could reduce entire mountains to ash. In this oh. world, however, a chimera was a dangerous monster of a very special sort. Mm. While monsters in were animals who consumed magical stones and subsequently transformed, mm. chimera had been born of military-sponsored magical experiments. Mm. Claire, we have to run. Leave it to the army. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I might have been transported to this world as a game player character, but I had no intention of becoming the heroine the game wanted. It was mm -hmm. ridiculous to fight such a dangerous monster alone. The army was headed this mm -hmm. way, and they could handle it. We didn't need adventure. That's interesting, because obviously in the anime, she wanted Claire to help her destroy the Chimera. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, maybe she'll come to that in this. Nope.
Nope. No. Oh. Claire's oh. boys to the ground. I'll stop it here. Oh. Miss Claire? Every second we wait, it wrecks more havoc. Everything I let it get away with, we take it all by Lenny. Oh. Miss Claire. Lenny was choked up at Claire's words. Yep, that was my Claire. Still cared about Lenny even Aww. after being betrayed. She was a high-handed, arrogant, selfish, but she was so much more than that. Mm. Ah, I said, you have a losing personality, Miss Claire. <laughs> Why? Even at times like these, you're worried about those who hurt you. No, oh. that's not it. Claire denied, flustered. Lenny uh. belongs to me. She's my servant, so it's my uh. responsibility to supervise. Uh. Oh, right, mm-hmm. You can uh. keep pretending not to well, care if yeah. you like, but this is an emergency. We don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. Whatever, you go. Call the army. Claire motioned for the shoe-away motion. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? I'm going to help you. I wish I could say I don't need your help, but clearly mm -hmm. I could use it. Does that mean mm -hmm. I belong to you, too? I haven't accepted you yet. Uh. There you go again. Let me stop you the fun right there now, ladies. The black man was interrupted. Mr. Lambert, stop moping and get the chimera moving. Oh. As you say. Lambert has hesitant, was hesitant, but he still rang the bell. Mm. Charge, terminate the nobility. In response mm. to the mass man... Oh. Charge, terminate the nobility. In response to the mass man's command, Chimera let out an earth-shaking roar. It was the same hateful cry the water slime had used, which was some paralyzing properties. Oh. Uh, Miss Claire, can you move? Who are you talking to? I would never make the same mistake twice. Uh, Hateful cry was difficult to fend off if caught off guard, mm -hmm. but it could be resisted by those prepared and ready to fight. Mm. Do you know the Chimera's magic attributes? Of course. Mm -hmm. Chimera had three attributes. Fire, earth, and water. Mm -hmm. The lion's head was fire, the ghost torso was earth, and the viper's head was water. Oh. I'll be here to assist you, Miss Claire. I'm ready. The words had barely left her mouth when Claire summoned a fire spell. Burn to ashes! She rolled her magic wand, sending the spear flying at the chimera, but the monster swung his tail mm. with agility seemed impossible, giving its massive size, and struck the spear out of the air. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. It this looks like, intense. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah, you need some water. So it has three different elements. Mm -hmm. Chimeras usually do, yeah. Mm. I never looked too much into them because they're in video games and other mm. things I've seen, but I never knew that the body was a goat body. Oh. I knew about the lion, and I knew about the other stuff, but I never mm. really thought, that's kind of cool, I want something new. Mm -hmm. It looks like straightforward attacks won't cut it. It isn't as stupid as it looks. Oh. And how about this? I generated a stone arrow and fired it behind the chimera. Whoa. My target was Lambert, who held oh. the magic bell. Brother! Don't worry. Right before it reached Lambert, the stone arrow was repelled by a wind barrier by the masked man. Apparently, he was a wind wielder. Ooh. <laughs> Aiming for the controller is smart, but you didn't even hesitate to shoot at a guy who used to be your friend. Uh. You're a girl with no mercy. The man with the black mask said, disgusted. Uh. My priority is protecting Claire and ending mm -hmm. the battle. I like Lene, and I sympathize with Lambert, but if it was them versus Claire's safety, my choice was obvious. Putting Claire at the risk once had been more than enough. <laughs> that said, it would be difficult to target Lambert as long as the masked man was there to protect him. Mm. We're going to have to defeat the Chimera after all. Speaking of which, Miss Claire! The monster <laughs> opened his massive jaws wide and I grabbed Claire, hugging her tight in anticipation of what would come next. Uh. She screams in protest, but the next moment we were engulfed in flames. <gasps> wow. That was close. The, the Chimera's fire breath is more powerful than you can imagine. Mm. I had thrown up the strongest water barrier I could summon, oh. but the rest of the lab was in ruins. The mm. magic tools used for the analysis were reduced to cinders, mm. and even the brick walls were particularly melted. We were now in real danger of the carbon monoxide poisoning with all the smoke, oh, and the no. roof might collapse at any moment. Mm. Let's go outside, I whispered to Claire to, so Lambert couldn't hear. Mm. But it'll do even more damage. We'll lead it to the next, the rear schoolyard. People are still mostly congregated in the athletic field. Mm. The academy student staff are probably in the dorms. Got it. Claire nodded and threw a firebomb at the brittle walls, melting a hole just big enough for, for a person to pass through. Run! She's the daughter of the finance minister. Don't let her get away. Oh. We heard the masked man cry as we ran. We didn't respond. Lambert rang the bell and ordered the chimera to pursue us. The research building collapsed behind us moments after we made it through the front door. Cold sweat ran down my back. Oh... <laughs> Any chance we crush it in the collapse? Doesn't seem like it. Just as I mm. said that, the chimera burst through debris with earth-shaking rumble, still hot in pursuit. Ah! <sighs> Claire launched flaming arrows at the approaching beast. They were smaller than the flame spheres, but faster, and they surrounded the monster, exploding on impact. Uh. But the chimera continued to bear down on us, seemingly unaffected by the arrows. Freeze! I trapped the chimera's massive body in a huge block of ice. Uh. What is this crazy magic? Claire uh. demanded. I'll muster up everything to save you, Miss Claire! My reply was lighthearted, but we weren't safe yet. The monster's lion had breathed fire, reducing the ice to water in a matter of seconds. Wow. Can't you freeze its core? That would take too long, and I think the water attribute tail would remain unaffected, I said. Oh. Miss Claire, for the first time in our lives, let's work together. What should I do? Claire answered seriously. She knew this wasn't time for jokes. Like they did before, I'll use my water attribute to boost your magic, so aim for the head. Won't wow. Chimera just deflect the attack with his tail again? Mm -hmm. Can you call upon your special move from the Academy Night Selection Exam? 
I see. But I have to gather my magic a bit to cast that. I'll buy you some time. Get started. Claire smiled fiercely. Are you saying I should trust you? If you can, <laughs> well, fine. And with that, all that remained for me to do was to support Claire with everything I had. Ooh. Flame! Claire materialized countless small fire bolts and fired them at the chimera, peppering the goat torso. The monster kept advancing unaffected. He opened his jaws to breathe fire as I cast my magic. Freeze! I, as a, before the chimera was encased in ice, momentarily frozen. Now, Miss Claire! Ooh. Claire stretched her arms out on her sides. Four spectral images of the Francois family crest appeared in the air around her as the ice encasing the monster began to shudder and break. Oh. Light! The light of the four, four crests swallowed the incoming fire breath, turning into a puff of smoke. Ooh. Claire's magic ray cascaded down the chimera's open jaws, filling his throat and searing through his entire body. Whoa. With a terrible cry, the giant collapsed. This time, he didn't move again. Oh. Is he we done did for? it! Yeah. Oh. Good job! I knew you had it in you, Miss Claire! In that moment of relief, when the tension between Claire and I dissolved for once, we were caught Aww. off guard. Very impressive. You have proven yourself, young lady. The black-masked man appeared as if out of nowhere and swung a knife at Claire. Miss Claire! For one terrible moment, I thought it was over, but the blade should have killed Claire was blocked by a powerful arm. Oh. Master Thane! That was close. The black-masked man's knife was embedded into Thane's arm. Oh. Fresh blood dripped from the wound. Well now, what do we have here? A disgraced prince? <gasps> Insurgents. Thane answered, the masked man's words with a magic-empowered fist. The uh. man dodged, but the blow grazed him, knocking his mask to the ground. <gasps> Can uh. we see what he looks like? <gasps> I tried to catch a glimpse of his naked face as he swiftly covered it with his hands. Oh, I guess you didn't get to see it. Yeah, we don't. Huh, I thought I had you all figured out, but it seems you still have something up your sleeve. Mm -hmm. The army will be here soon. You should surrender. <laughs> there were skilled mages in the army, but Thane's bo uh, body reinforced wind magic was in a league of its own. Mm -hmm. He probably arrived first because he could outrun them, though oh. it was still absurd to let a prince go ahead of himself. Mm. Is that right? Then I guess I'll just have to make a run for it, said huh? the masked man, as before his bright, <laughs> cheerful tone was jarring with the situation. You think you could escape? Oh. I'll figure something out. Besides, it looks like I got what I wanted, doesn't ah. it? We stared at him, not knowing what he meant. My goal was mm. to kill as many nobles as possible. Mm. But something even better happened. Something I never expected has fallen into my hands. That's uh -oh. quite ominous. Oh, that's very ominous. As I tried to wrap my head around what he means, Thane right. suddenly cried out and fell to his knees. <gasps> Master Thane! Oh, no. Thane, Claire rushed to his side. Mm. It was poison. Um. Correct. A special new poison for which has no antidote in existence. Please savor it. The man spat these savor words with joyful I abandon. Cannot, I friend. know, but he's fun to voice. Yeah. As he disappeared into you the darkness of the night. <laughs> you do a really good job with his voice. Thanks. Uh -huh. Master Thane! Master Thane! Claire clung to the fallen Thane and called his name, but there was mm. no response. His breathing was labored. His forehead was slick with sweat. He let out a painful moan. Ominous black spots had formed on his skin. Call a doctor! Call for a doctor now! Miss Claire, please step away. But Master Thane, it's okay. I think I can neutralize it. Oh. Somehow I managed to pry the utterly distraught Claire from the man she loved, who was on the brink mm. of death, and called upon my detoxifying water magic. Mm. The spots. Under the touch of my magic, the black splotches on Thane's skin faded. He remained unconscious, but his breathing began to even out. So it was poison from the Nor Empire, I said. What? Is that where that man was from? I nodded. The Nor Empire <sighs> was a powerful nation that bordered the Barrow Kingdom to the, to the east. Mm. A number of the game's events were instigated by this enemy nation, including the second half of the game, the use of poison called Cantarella. There oh. was a fan theory that Cantarella was actually the poison known as an arsonist acid in our world, oh. which no one has yet figured out how to isolate as a pure material. Mm. But the heroine eventually determined to stop to magically neutralize the poison in the game, so I knew how to treat Thame. Mm. How did you know that? Claire asked. No comment. Uh, and why were you alone in the lab? No it's comment. like you knew Lene and her brother would betray us. Uh, uh, I was suspicious of Lambert. Lene really surprised me, though. I gave Claire the, bl mm. the blend of truth and lies. Though she was single-minded, she wasn't stupid. So I had to tread carefully if I wanted to trick her. Are you? She started, but then just Thane began to rouse. Master Thane! Mm. Claire, is that you? <laughs> You're safe. Good. Mm. What are you talking about? You were in danger. What we would have done if something happened to you? Mm -hmm. Claire clung to him, tears running down her face. Thane looked Aww. like he wasn't sure what to do, but he finally held her back, stroking her hair. I'm sorry, I worried you. If, if you hadn't woken up, then I... I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but... I said awkwardly to the couple who were trying to take the spotlight from the heroine. Me? Mm. How about we move somewhere else? It's cold here. Uh. You? 
Claire granted me like she wanted she me to drop dead. <laughs> oh, but yeah. it was the truth. Like, spring night was cold in a way that wouldn't do mm. our patient any favors. It wasn't because I was jealous of Thane. Nope, not at all. Not uh, me. Totally not jealous. And after that, the soldiers arrived to take the other men, Lambert and Lenny, into custody. And then the Academy Knights showed up to collect us, led by Rod. The truth about the insurgents hidden within the commoner movement was revealed in the days to come, mm. causing the movement to lose steam. Hmm. There was still plenty of simmering dissatisfaction with the nobility, but the protest seems to have subsided for now. Huh? The, the Academy... <laughs> I got a six for a second. The Academy okay. taken such significant damage. Claw marks were starkly visible amongst the rubble, and prevailing air on campus, one of the hmm. quiet caution, as workers from the construction guild carried in lumber and bricks for repairs. Hmm. Claire, meanwhile, was often listless. Even as Rod briefed the Academy Knights on the state of affairs at our next meeting, hmm. she was distracted, continuously glancing to her left, the spot hmm. where Lena usually stood, always waiting for her. Oh. Lenny and Lambert had been arrested for treason. They might have been blackmailed, but the fact remained that they had an assisted a foreign invasion and mm -hmm. had been accessories to attempted murder of an aristocrat and a member of the royal family. Mm -hmm. Dire charges, even for nobles, and the Iranians mm -hmm. were commoners. The best case scenario was that Lenny and Lambert would be sentenced to death, oh. and the worst case scenario was that the entire family would face ex execution. Oh. Their assets had been seized, their contracts for management of magical stones revoked, and the whole family now waited for the king to pronounce judgment. Oh. Will the Rosen family be executed? Claire asked Rod. Mm. It's likely. I'm not sure. I'm sure they had their reasons, but this is just too serious to overlook. Mm -hmm. That's true. The meeting was silent. It wasn't just Claire's affection for Lenny turning their stomachs. The Academy Knights had liked and trusted Lambert. Mm. Oh, yeah, Claire and Ray. It seems you're going to be rewarded, Rod said, trying to spell the gloom. Rewarded? Of course. You identified the true culprits, and you took down a chimera. Ray even <sighs> saved Thane's life. Mm. I'll expect you. You'll be summoned to the royal family. His majesty wants to present you with the reward in... Oh, wait, that's you. Oops, sorry, you. <laughs> I expect you'll be summoned to the royal palace soon. His majesty wants to present you a reward in person. Yay! You chimed in. I, I wonder if the co pictures coming might be pictures right? of them all dressed up. Okay, go I ahead. really didn't do much, Claire started. Oh, is that so? That would be a tremendous honor, I interrupted <laughs> her, cutting her off. Excuse you, Claire snapped. Miss Claire, mm. I have an idea. I lowered my voice even further, whispering into her ear so no one else could hear. I see. I think it's worth trying. Ray, yeah. just as you projected, we were summoned into the Royal Palace a few days later. It was my first visit to the Royal Palace. We passed through a majestic gate and walked along a soft, expensive carpeting as we mm. were shown to the waiting room. The king met with dozens of people every day. Mm. Claire and I were the only ones present in that room at the moment. But there had to be numerous other vestibule, uh, no, vestibules where people were waiting mm. for audiences too. Sit down. You're being restless. Claire was probably used to this. She was sipping tea and showed not the slightest sign of anxiety. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of the room in a palace that are completely unlike anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Naturally, the royal palace represents the pinnacle of the kingdom's culture. Everything uh -huh. in it is made from materials of the highest grade. For example, this table is probably mahogany. Huh. It always looks expensive to me. The finer aesthetics of wealth were wasted on me, like uh -huh. casting pearls, pearls before swine or preaching to a deaf ears. Uh -huh. Well, you get the gist. Hmm. Thank you for loaning me clothes, I told Claire as she returned her teacup to her saucer. I planned to appear before the king in my uniform since I was a student, but Claire had panicked mm. when I told her as much. Oh. She'd rushed to find me something more appropriate, which turned out to be a pantsuit in formal black pants. Yay. With long sleeves, apparently there was an extensive dress code that stipulated what you could wear to a royal audience. Yeah. Claire was clad in an elegant dress, not an evening mm. gown, but a conservative day dress covered with most of her skin, with mm. an ankle-length skir uh, ankle skirt. I wore my outfit awkwardly, but Claire stuck her like a glove. I suppose it went without saying that she was a noble, and it showed. Ooh. I didn't do it for you. I couldn't have my maid's lack of dress sense reflect badly on with his majesty. <laughs> That's a nice excuse. I know you love me. Uh -huh. I really wish you would just shut up. Uh -huh. Despite my retort, Claire's expression was satisfied and confident. Mm. Eventually, an attendant came to fetch us. We mm. walked down the palace corridor, stepping carefully on the plush red carpet. Claire walked mm. with ease despite her long hem dress, high heels, before long we came to the ceremonial set of doors. Ooh. I present Claire Francois and Ray Taylor. When yeah. the attendant announced our names, the intricately established door swung open. The man mm. bowed to us and Claire, and I stepped into the room. Mm. Keeping our heads down on the throne before us sat King, this will be interesting, Al Alassal and his queen Rishi, mm. flanked on either side of the guards and the soldiers. Mm. The attendant who'd escorted us approached the throne and then dropped to his knee, bowing deeply. Mm. Claire had grilled me on the necessar necessary etiquette the night before, so I suppose I could give her the V-Ray. Nice to meet you, Joe! <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just this once. 
Let me see your faces. The Majesty's heavy voice surrounded throughout the room, giving us permission to look upon him and the Queen. Mm. King Asali had black hair and black eyes. He reminded me of Rod, though not as vivacious, of course. His posture and presence brought to mind the kings you saw in a deck of cards, but more mm. beautiful still. The crown upon his head glistened. Queen Rishi, meanwhile, had golden hair and blue eyes. Ooh. Good looks, and she clearly passed on to you. Yeah. The long hair was pulled back, and a silver tiara on her head shone bright. Aww. She was covering her mouth with a fan, so I couldn't read her facial expression. <laughs> I am told you took the lead in resolving a series of incidents at the Royal Academy, said the king. You have done well. Very good kingly voice. Thank you. We <laughs> lowered our eyes again at his words of appreciation. I also heard you saved my son Thane's life. In gratitude for the great service you have done to our land, I shall bestow upon you a fitting reward. Yeah. Name your desire. At that, we lifted our heads again. Uh, is it going to be Ray? Oh, it's both of them? Oh, no, it's Claire. Yeah, because I think she was Claire supposed Francois to be the only one that and would And Ray speak. Taylor. It yeah. is our honor and delight to meet you today, Claire spoke. We had agreed beforehand that she would handle this part. It hardly seemed proper for a commoner mm. like me to address his majesty. Mm. Hmm. His majesty nodded encouragingly. As our reward, we have one request, your majesty. Let me hear it. This was a crucial moment. You got this, Claire. Yeah. We beg the lives of the Orson family be spared. A stir went through the room at Claire's words, as mm. only was to be expected. Silence! His majesty's voice bellowed as the room fell quiet once again. The mm. king was silent himself for a few moments, then spoke. It is my understanding that the Erosians were primarily culprits in what occurred. You would request their sentence be reduced? Mm. I would humbly request that your majesty pardon them, Claire repeated in response oh. to the king's flat, unreadable words. Sell us what you say. When addressed by the king, the chancellor stepped forward from behind the throne. This was Solus Ilium, a handsome man with silver and red eyes. This is difficult. Rewarding good behavior and punishing the poor conduct of the principle of the kingdom law. There is no mm. reason to commute the sentence of the Erosians, mm. Solus commanded. The Rosians have, uh... The Rosians have served the country faithfully until now. Their mm. contributions, especially in the Magical Stones business, cannot be overlooked. Mm. I humbly request once again the pardon, Your Majesty. Yeah. Claire desperately pressed her appeal. This was the only chance to save Renee and Lambert's lives. Is it true the Rosians have served us well? Is it possible to commute their sentence to consideration of such merit, Stolas? The king mm. said. The crimes they committed, including colluding with the foreign invaders, the attempted murder of royal nobility, these are crimes that are too great to be offset by prior achievement. It can only be answered for by destruction of the house. Mm. Salus replied coldly, So be it. Do you have another request? We failed. Claire's mm. face was pale. Her hands clenched into fists. Mm. Your Majesty... Oh, wait. Uh, your Majesty, is there any... Uh, t hang on. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Your Majesty, is there any way you can fill the requests? Said a familiar voice. Thane mm -hmm. entered through the side door, now stood beside Claire. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. The incidents at the Academy were fueled by a general populist resentment of the ruling class. The mm -hmm. country incident, which led to the riots, inviting criticism from the government, unduly favored mm -hmm. aristocrats. Thane's voice was clear and resonant. I've never heard him speak like this before. The commoner movement has subsided now, but they've proven the Rosorians were at fault. But if the royal family does not prove itself capable of passing fair and impartial judgment on commoners, we will inevitably see similar backlash. Are you yep. saying that sparing the uh, lives of the Rosian family will prevent such dissatisfaction? Uh, yes, I am. Hmm. Your Majesty, Master Thane, with all due respect, Salas interrupted, the Erosians suspected of uh, exacerbating the commoner movement. The royal family does not disregard commoners, but the aristocrats who were endangered by the Erosians will not let this pass. Hmm. He wasn't wrong. The masked man's goal had been to kill a noble child. If the Chimera had been allowed to rampage unchecked through the academy, he would have been successful. Mm -hmm. Is this still Salas? Nope, this is Thane. Mm. Rishi Ward of Balance. The scales of the king's favor are currently tipped towards the aristocrats. Considering the importance of magic, it is clear we must tip those scales further toward the commoners' favor to balance them. Mm. Please reconsider this. If for no other reason than to keep your majesty's meteorotic policy from being... Metacratic? Yeah, whatever. Metacratic policy from becoming a dead letter. Mm -hmm. Thane fell silent in his case. I understand both of your arguments. The king fell silent in deep thought. A few minutes passed and felt like an eternity. We waited to hear the king's pronouncing. The Rosian shall be deported, his majesty finally said. Claire and I looked at each other in relief. Your majesty, with all solace, I have spoken. Understood. Sound reluctantly fell back into line. Claire mm -hmm. Francois, Ray Taylor, you are excused. Yes. Thane, uh, Thane, you will stay. I have something to discuss with you. Yes, sir. Claire and I left the room. We stayed silent for a while, even once we'd walked out of the palace. Once we were past the gates, though, I couldn't hold it anymore. We did it! Hurrah! <gasps> yeah! Claire and I actually pumped our fists in unrehearsed oh, synchrony. They pumped fists. She looked at me, looking back at her, and quickly dropped her fist. Hmm, uh, would you stop copying?
copying me. Uh, it's like reading each other's minds. Uh, uh, That's a wondrous thing. Let's be happy. Uh, I don't see why we have to be happy together. <laughs> and let's just love each other. What I are you talking see about? Why we have to be happy together? And we were back to normal once more with the slight difference that Claire mm. was talking more than she typically did. Mm. We made our chit chatter than usual. Un- you uh, made our we bleh. we made our chit chattier than usual on our uh. way back to the academy. Mm-hmm. On the day the Erosians were abandoned, I accompanied Claire to the point of the kingdom's border with mm-hmm. the mountain, or, uh, mountain, mountainous Alps. The border crossing would be one of Lene and her brother used that were expelled from the kingdom. The Erosian mm-hmm. family's fortune had mostly been confiscated, leaving them only with bare necessities for their move to the Alps, mm-hmm. where they would lie on family. The Alps were a part of the friendly nation with a long history of diplomatic accord with the Bear Kingdom. It was an mm-hmm. agricultural region with fertile land and... Uh, politically stable if not wealthy a good place to start over in in contrast with our melancholy state the weather had been beautiful not a cloud in the sky claire dragged her parasol listlessly along the ground (sighs) the weather is nice i said yes it is she replied indifferently she was staring at the border crossing we didn't get to see a picture of the two of them in their fancy outfits no I was hoping for The crossing that. itself consisted of a building that had constructed over the... Are you wanting to finish it? Yeah, we're... I want to finish it. Okay. We got to finish it. We only have this much left. We're 55 minutes in. No, 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 no. In. We have to finish I, it. I, I got you. I got you. That's why I'm asking, because <laughs> yeah. usually this is about where we wrap up. It but... is, but we're going to finish it. Okay, we're going to finish it. Because it's so, so close, right? Yeah. It was equipped with a massive sturdy gate that could be locked in case of emergency. The checkpoint was inside mm. the building. Mm. And the Erosians were currently going through it. They dealt with magical stone in the Bear Kingdom, but it was forbidden to take their technology outside the country, mm. so their possession and documents were undoubtedly being thoroughly searched. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Mm. I wonder if the Erosians will be all right in the Alps. I've heard their father, Bartley, is a competent man. He may not get them back into where they used to be, but I'm sure he'll do just fine, Claire answered matter-of-factly, but her tone was somber, somewhat mm-hmm. distant. Mm. It'll be worse for Lenny and Lambert. Yes. Their forbidden love had nearly gotten the entire family killed. Yeah. The Erosian family would disown Lenny and Lambert once they had mitigated to the Alps, forcing mm. them to rebuild their lives alone in a new country without any support. Mm. In a world where most people inherited the family business, the implications of this were severe. All they can do is keep living, and as long as they are alive, things will work out. It sounded almost like Claire was trying to convince herself if she was mm. willing to be true. It looks like the inspection is over. The Erosian family moved towards the gate as we watched from just outside the fence surrounding the compound. Mm. Almost everyone in the Erosian employed had also been fired, leaving only 20 or so family members to make the journey unassisted. Oh. Among them were Lenny and Lambert. Lenny! I called running up to the oh. iron fence. Lenny approached from the other side. Mm. I'm sorry, Ray. And Miss Claire, too. Miss mm. Claire, she said she wanted to say goodbye. I said no such thing. Uh. You insisted on bringing me along no matter what I did. Uh. It's been a while, but I'm relieved to see you two are the same as always. Aww. Lene giggled. Her laugh sounded weak, I understood. There was a slight pause. Lene, do you resent me? Claire asked timidly. Mm. Nothing of the sort. Lene was flustered. It was only fair that my family be punished. It was thanks to you begging his majesty for mercy that we're even alive now. Mm-hmm. But I was the one who caught you, Claire said with only a hint of self-deprecation. <sighs> no. I am grateful to you for stopping our violence. Hmm. My sister and I realize that what we have done. Lambert came over to join us, wearing a distressed look. They say love is blind. Ours narrowed our vision, and this is the result. That mm-hmm. many exploited my feelings to make me do his will. Lenny nodded. Ray, be careful. Don't anyone use the feelings you have for Miss Claire. Ah, was that. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what she meant. Were you like me? Yep. I oh, won't. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Lambert, Lenny, it's time to go. Someone from the family called. Lenny, take this with you. I handed Lenny a bundle of parchment through this. This is their new recipes. Remember to use the mayonnaise. Mm. Are you sure? Mm hmm. I think I'll earn you some seed money. This was all I could do for her for now. Aww. Well, farewell then, Miss Claire. Ray, thank you for everything. Bye, Lenny. I said. Claire remained silent. Lenny smiled sadly and turned away. She mm. and Lambert headed to rejoin their family. Miss Claire, I said. You don't want to say goodbye? She didn't answer. Claire had a conflicted look on her face, clearly processing a whirlwind of emotion. In that moment, I saw her for so much more than something as simple as a villainess. Mm. Lene! Claire suddenly called out. Lene turned in surprise. I won't say goodbye. I'll see you again someday. Uh-huh. Until then, stay healthy. Claire. I thought I saw Lene smile, but I couldn't be sure. Maybe I just wanted to believe that's what I'd seen. They kept walking, and eventually she and Lambert were gone and out of our sight. Mm. Claire was silent again, but her eyes were dry. Miss Claire? I said, what is it? Can I hug you? <laughs> oh, <gasps> that's of, what the picture is of course not oh. i'm going home claire turned away and walked ahead of me 
You shouldn't even be so stubborn in times like this. People are far more complicated than a book or a game can even ever really depict. And I love that about them, especially the awkward ones. <sighs> Miss Claire! Ugh! What are you doing? Let go of me! <laughs> I won't let you I won't let you go, but I'll let you talk. Stop talking nonsense. <sighs> Curse me all you like, Claire. Return to being your normal happy self if you can. Aww. And if you can't, it's okay to cry, you know. Oh. Don't be stupid. I just lost a maid. Why would I ever cry over something like that? <gasps> Miss Claire, I'm behind you right now. I can't see your face. Oh. I told you. I stayed where I was embracing her from behind. You didn't want Lady oh. to leave, I said. A few drops of water hit my hand, which were wrapped mm. around her. Things don't always turn out the way you want. Even mm. falling in love isn't free. More teardrops. My oh. hands were getting wet. We stayed there for a while. You really are cheeky for a peasant, Claire <laughs> said. Yes, I'm cheeky. You should punish me. <gasps> no. You just consider that a reward, wouldn't you? Let me hold it. There you go. Yep. Yep. It's so freaking cute. Yep. Look at that. I know. Oh, I know. Look at her little I know. sad face. I know. Oh, and the tears I streaming. Know. I know. <sighs> I know. It's really sweet. It is. Miss Claire, you know me so well. Our only choice now is to get married. I will mm. not. And with that, we were back to normal. I walked by Claire's side, happy to receive her sharp words. Mm -hmm. I hope we see her again, I said, looking back at the border. I'm sure Aww. we will. Claire's voice was no longer clouded over. Instead, it echoed as clearly as the blue sky stretched above us. Aww. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, bonus thought... chapter! Oh, it's a bonus Here chapter. Here we go. Okay. You want to read that, too? Let's see how much There's not that is. much. There's not that much. There really isn't that much. Okay. It's a bonus chapter. we got to finish it. Is there more pictures? I don't think so. But that was a cute picture. So this bonus chapter is called My Lady Claire Francois. Mm. Oh. Oh, mm. is this Lene's perspective? Oh. Lene, are you ready? My brother said to me, once I bid farewell to Ray and Miss Claire. Mm -hmm. Yes, the longer we linger, the harder will be to say goodbye. Secretly, I regretted not apologizing to Miss Claire in my mm -hmm. own words. The crimes that my brother and I had committed were unforgivable, oh. and I thought it would be presumptuous of me to even try. Besides, of course, apologies are far mo are more for the culprit's benefit than the victim. Mm -hmm. But my heart was so overburdened by my guilt that it was the end. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even give her a proper goodbye. Mm -hmm. My soul was overshadowed. Lene! The wind brought an unstable voice of my lady to my ears, and oh. I turned back instinctively. I won't say goodbye. I'll see you again someday. Until then, stay healthy. Mm. I was sure that no one, not even my beloved brother, could understand how these words made me feel. Oh. I was just a servant, one of Miss Claire's many servants, mm. and yet she had such kind words for me, someone who had viciously betrayed her. In that moment, I was more grateful than ever for her compassion heart. Mm. She was a good lady. My brother smiled gently at me. I shook mm. my head in disagreement. Not past tense. Miss Claire is and always will be my lady. I Aww. said, wiping my tears. My brother just said, Sweet. I see, and then stroked my hair. Ugh. I had served Miss Claire ever since we were children. Mm. As we walked away, my head swirled with memories of ten years we'd walk side by side. Of course, our relationship hadn't always been all sunshine and sweetness. Yeah. I thought back to when I'd met Miss Claire for the first time, uh. looking back, far away silhouettes. Oh, we're going to get the past. Oh. We're going to get kid versions. All right. This is Lenia Soren. Starting today, she will serve as Miss Claire's attendant. Hmm? Lenia, introduce yourself. My name is Lenia Soren. I'm <sighs> pleased to meet you. Hmm, I don't care about your name. I'm sure you'll quit in a week anyway. Miss <laughs> Claire was... Your little Claire voice is really <laughs> cute. Miss <laughs> Claire was two or three years younger than me. I was seven. She spoke like a much older girl, and her spiral curl bouncing cutely as she trained a grumpily expression on me. She was adorable, <laughs> and I would have been would have been cuter if she smiled. Aww. Now then, Miss Claire, Lenny will take care of you. Please excuse me. With that, the senior maid left the room. I would discover later that Miss Claire wasn't fond of the senior maid and that she was feelings were mutual. It wasn't just the senior maid either. Most of the maids serving the Francois household disliked Miss Claire, <laughs> and my first impression wasn't exactly the best. Commoner! Yeah. My name is Lenny, Miss Claire. I told you, I don't care about your name. <gasps> Commoner, turn into a horse. A horse? <sighs> I take back what I said. My first impression of her was horrible. <gasps> yeah, I was that... a commoner, just like Miss Claire said. The mm. eldest daughter of the Rosie. Oh, she's the eldest. Oh, she's oh. old. Okay. Who dealt with... She must have other sisters. Who yeah. dealt with magical stones. The Rosians, which did most of their business with the royal family, were commoners, but also wealthy merchants. Mm. We had enough assets that our standard of living was actually higher than some lower-tier nobles. Mm. I didn't plan to get haughty about it, but I didn't like being ridiculed for my commoner status mm. on my first day of service. Yeah. Whether I liked it or not, my father had gone to great expense to explain to me that 
my service would be strengthening the bonds between our company and our oh. in-house Francois, mm. and if I did my job well, it might benefit my brother. Oh. My brother, Lambert, was exceptional. His magical talent made itself evident at a young age and even earned him an invitation to study at the Royal Academy, mm. which was just beginning to open its doors to commoners. Mm. I had a deep respect for my brother. I would gladly watch over the selfish young lady if it might benefit him in the slightest. <gasps> You don't know what a horse is, stupid commoner! <gasps> no, I know what a horse is, but why? Because I want to ride a horse! Shut up and get on all fours! Oh, oh no. Claire, who was several inches shorter than me, oh, stared up at no. me as she called me stupid. It would have been easy to give in, but if I gave her everything she asked for, her demands would only escalate. Miss mm. Claire, please forgive me for not turning into a horse. What did you say? Claire's voice became even grumpier. Oh. Are you saying you won't follow my orders? Yes. Oh. You! Seeing she was about to launch into a temper tantrum, I said, I cannot allow someone as noble as Miss Claire to ride on the back of someone as lowly as me. Oh, By faking humility, I can stroke Miss Claire's ego while also bring her around to my point of view. Oh. As a merchant's daughter, I'd been raised to handle aristocrats oh. and had a number of tricks up my in my repertoire. Nice. Hmm. Well, maybe you're not so stupid for a commoner. Oh. Miss Claire seemed satisfied with my answer, oh. at least for the time being. I hoped it wouldn't be as difficult to control this selfish lady as I originally thought. Mm. You may actually have some promise. Good. Oh. I will allow you to be my attendant for now. Oh. You have my gratitude. Allow you And for such now. was the first time that Miss Claire and I met. It took me a while to master the art of Miss Claire's curls. She was a selfish little girl mm. who gave the many maids who digitally tended to her no end of grief. Oh. But somehow I could manage her better than most. I was paid exceptionally well for my services, and gradually mm, I, I gained Miss Claire's trust. Oh. During this time, I learned a number of things about the Francois household. Miss mm. Claire's parents, Master Dole and Madame Melia. Oh, that was her mom's name. Melia left the house often. Mm. I suppose that was natural for Master Dole and the Minister of Finance, but Madame Melia rarely came home either. She was a popular socialite and a social butterfly who could pull strings behind the scenes and was said to be the Master Dole's right hand. Oh. Since they were gone so often, they spoiled Claire's rotten when they were around. <laughs> if Miss Claire said she liked strawberries, for example, they would upend the functioning of farm... Wait, they would upend the functioning of farms and cold storage facilities to ensure she had a constant <gasps> supply of strawberries oh, throughout the strawberry. year. With no one around to give her honest advice, Miss Claire grew into a more selfish young lady by the day. Oh. Not long after I became Miss Claire's attendant, the house filled with the hubbub of preparing for Miss Claire's fourth birthday party. Oh. Servants rushed to mail in our invitations, design the menu, decorate the room. My job was to stay by Miss Claire's side. Hmm. There was already an implicit understanding among the attendants that handling Miss Claire was primarily my task. Oh. It was natural and therefore that I had accompanied Miss Claire when she went shopping. <laughs> Miss Claire had anything oh, no. she wanted brought to her room, but sometimes she liked to go out the store on her own. This mm. particular day, she brought us to a bouquet, or not bouquet, a boutique. Boutique? She, yeah, boutique that she <laughs> frequented. However, she wasn't shopping for herself. She was shopping for me. Aww. Um, Miss Claire, I, I don't mind wearing a servant's clothing. No, I refuse to accept that my attendant does not own a single dress. Oh. Miss Claire said in her instruction that the store employees brought out a wide selection of clothing. I had dressed at my parents' home, but they were made for a commoner. I thought my heart would fly to my chest when I saw these glittering gowns for the first time. Uh. Perhaps, perhaps that's why I forgot I didn't, I didn't belong here. Mm. Hey, why is there a commoner here? <gasps> Just as Claire vanished into the back of the store with this clerk to select other clothes, I heard a voice behind me. <gasps> I turned to see a man who seemed to be an aristocrat from another country. Yikes. This store is for nobles, commoner. Go away. Mm. The foreign aristocrat shooed me away with his large hands. Frightened, I backed away and tripped, falling on my rear end. I knocked a rag of clothing down with me, sending a number of items worth several years of my salary to the ground. <gasps> Horrified by what I'd done, I could only cower. Let's see here. Well, hello, your highness, Dur Darcel. Pardon me, I didn't see you come in. Shopkeeper, this commoner's unsightly. Dispose of her unsightliness. Oh, no. I apologize, but she's here with an aristocrat of the Bear Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I won't say it again, unsightly. Uh -oh. It seemed that the arrogant master Darcel wanted me to go no matter what. And judging mm -hmm. by the way the shopkeeper addressed him, he wasn't just an aristocrat, but a member of the royal family. Mm -hmm. I decided it would be best if I just left. Mm -hmm. But before I could, your royal highness of Larno, has my servant done something to offend you? Miss mm -hmm. Claire came back speaking fluently in a foreign language. You could speak lower knees. How impressive for such a young child. Much obliged, your highness. I am Claire Francois, daughter of Dole Francois, minister of finance of the Bear Kingdom. Um, four years old? Four yeah, years old? Four. Ah, Dole's daughter, I see. No wonder you're so well-behaved and educated. Uh, Thank you well very much. Well-behaved. Miss Claire was having a casual mm. conversation with the royal several times her age. She's so well-behaved. All she could do was stare. However... Claire, it's appropriate for you to bring a commoner to the store. My nation, Loro, has invested in this establishment with the intent that it will cater exclusively to aristocrats. Commoners must not be allowed inside. Oh. Your Highness, have you heard of the new policy that the king lets you all plan to launch in the Bear Kingdom? Miss Claire asked, what? Master Darcel caught his head to the side. His majesty means to introduce new laws that will ev evaluate and educate the commoners. Perhaps yeah. this shop of yours, Master Darcel, will fall behind the times if it only <gasps> caters to aristocrats. Oh. How... 
does King Bear intend to bestow his grace on Common as well? Exactly so, Claire said. It hadn't been made public yet, but the number of high nobles in the royal family knew the meter... Meter... <laughs> meter... Metocratic? Okay. Like, oh, okay. Metocratic. Metocratic policy, including, of course, Wait, the Wait, let me see. No, it's too late. Where is it? It's gone forever. Where is it? Oh, yeah, Metacritic, yeah. yeah. Okay, got you, got Including, you. of course, the Francois household. I apologize, but I'm forever. practicing <laughs> what the kingdom will soon enforce. This is my test sub. Oh, mm. wait, this is Francois. Oh, I apologize, but I'm participating in what the kingdom will soon enforce. This is my test subject. Oh, this test subject. Is that right? Well, if um, the Burr intends to introduce such was laws... Was it meritocratic? I was confused. It doesn't matter anymore. Meritocratic. Laura will not stand okay, in his way. Gotcha. I will overlook this incident. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. Uh, and with that, the encounter came to an end. Mm -hmm. Somehow Claire had brought to peaceful conclusion. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I won't come to this store again. She whispered to me as we left the store. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Claire. I was a coward. Mm -hmm. oh, that stupid royal family really makes me angry. Oh, oh um, Miss Claire, Laura was a living in the past. <gasps> They're scum who couldn't stand on two feet without bar support. The Ooh. scum? And that scum dares to stare at my belongings? <gasps> if my father's reputation was on the line, I would have slapped him right then and there. Ooh. Four years old. Four. What do you mean, your belongings? Huh? I'm talking about you, Lenny. Uh, you belong to me. Don't you? you? I won't let that piece of royal scum hurt what belongs to me. Uh, Claire stood staring at me. Listen, Lenny. You are you are Claire Francois's servant. That mm -hmm. makes you the most important commoner in the country. Mm -hmm. Have pride in that. Yeah. The words echoed strangely through my heart. There was no doubt that Miss Claire was a selfish girl, a spoiled and beautiful aristocrat, but she was more than that. Once mm. you decided you were part of her family, she would protect you at all costs. Oh, In that moment, okay. I decided I wanted to stay with her. Oh. I, Lenny Osorin, swear to protect and become a servant worthy of Miss Claire. Lenny, why? Uh -huh. Good, give it your best. Give it that your was best. when my relationship with Miss Claire began to change. Oh, On the wow. morning of Miss Claire's birthday party, an unexpected problem rose. I'm sorry, Claire. Your father and I have something that we simply cannot reschedule. <gasps> Miss Claire's mother, Melia, said with heartfelt disappointment. Oh. They stayed home the night before, which was rare for them, to ensure they had no problems making to their daughter's birthday party. However, when the day itself <sighs> came, they received summons from a fellow aristocrat mm. they couldn't afford to ignore. No! Father and mother must stay with me! Today is my birthday! Oh, no. Miss Claire, who had been looking forward to spending time with her parents after not seeing them in a while, was naturally upset. Mm -hmm. Claire, don't give your mother trouble. This is our duty as nobles, mm. Master Dole chided, but he was clearly upset, too. You always leave me alone, and mm. now you won't even come to my birthday? Miss Claire mm. said, tears rolling down her face. The loneliness in her voice pulled on my heartstrings. Mm. I'm so very sorry, Claire. I'll make it up to you. That's right. I'll buy you anything you desire, Claire. Mm. Anything at all. What would you like? The look on Malaya's face suggested she thought she'd come up with an amazing idea, but I cringed internally. I don't need a present! I hate you, Mother! Oh, Miss Claire no. shouted. She turned on her heel and ran in the direction of her room. Claire? Oh, no. Madame Amelia watched her go with a sad look on her face. The older slumped. Claire will understand someday. Master Dole suited his wife. An aristocrat's mm. duty takes precedence over everything, even family. I know, and yet sometimes I wonder if she wouldn't have been happier if she weren't born as a noble, mm. Madame Amelia said faintly. Lene, please take good care of Claire. Cheer up somehow. Yes, ma'am. Have a safe trip, madam. Master. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, no. I said goodbye to them and headed to Miss Claire's room. After knocking three times, I tried the handle, and as expected, it wasn't locked. Miss Claire? My father and mother have left, haven't they? Mm. Her voice was full of loneliness. I wanted to run up to Miss Claire and hug her, mm. but the difference in our statuses didn't allow such a thing. Claire had been waiting with the door unlocked. She had noticed been... that wanted to run up and hug her, but she couldn't because of status. Yep. So then Ray, later, when she went yep. to hug her, it was, like, going against what yep. she should do. Yeah, Of course. Claire had been waiting mm. with the door unlocked. She had been hoping her parents would come after her. It was childish, selfish thing to do, of course, but mm. I understood how she felt. Mm. Master and Madam really want to be with you, Miss Claire. Mm. I, I wonder... I wonder if my father and mother wish they had a boy. Oh. At those words, I realized the true nature of Miss Claire's anxiety. Oh. Miss Claire feared that she was insufficient heir. No four-year-old should be worrying about such things on her birthday. Aww. But Miss Claire had already thoroughly internalized the rules and values of the aristocratic world. Mm. Not at all. Master and Madam are truly happy to have you for a daughter. Mm. If that's true, then why wouldn't they celebrate my birthday with me? I had no answer for that innocent question. I could have recited the duties of aristocrats, but they weren't what Miss Claire needed to hear. Mm -hmm. She wasn't challenging the logic of the aristocracy, but desires of the heart. Mm. Leave me. I want to be alone, <laughs> Miss Claire murmured when I said nothing. With nothing else I could do, I left the room. The birthday party began at that night. The honored guest, 
Miss Claire appeared with a smile, like morning incident had never happened. Mm. Thank you, everyone, she told the servants. You have my heartfelt gratitude for putting together such a wonderful party for me. Oh. The smile was entirely for her attendance. There mm. were still many servants who disliked Claire, but I no longer agreed with them. Mm. You were supposed to be selfish when you were four years old. You were still the center of your own world at that age. And besides, how many children could set their personal sorrow aside to play horses, a hostess, oh. the way that Miss Claire just had at mm. that tender age? Happy birthday, Miss Claire! This is from all the attendants. I presented the gift to Miss Claire. Really? Aww. Can I open it? I nodded and Miss Claire happily unwrapped it. What a lovely mm. brush! We'd give Miss Claire a fancy brush with bristles made of fine, sturdy pig's hair. But isn't it a big pig? You'll grow into it, Miss Claire. Aww. So it'll be perfect size someday. Until then, I hesitated. Until then? Mm. Until then. <coughs> <coughs> yep. I need some lemonade. I finished mine. It's so good, though. Mm -hmm. Until then, why don't you let, use it to let, um... Mm. Oh, this, this hurts. Oh, no. Until then, why don't you use it to brush Madam's hair? Oh, when you no. know. <coughs> why do they do this? To hurt us. Mm -hmm. oh. Miss Claire wore a startled expression for a moment, mm. clearly aware I was prying that she should make with her mother. <sighs> Oh, yes, I will do that. Oh, no. She said that that last. I grinned, and I took mean that Miss Claire would be fine. I was wrong. Um... <clears throat> My lady, it's terrible. <laughs> a servant rushed into the party. Her <sighs> face paled. I recognized her as Madam Lady Attendant. <sighs> the... What? What is the commotion? If you have something to say, say it, said the, com the main maid. The master in the madam's carriage has been in an accident. Father and mother? Claire cried. <sighs> No. Calm down, Miss Claire. I took a hold of Miss Claire to keep her calm, prompting the servant to continue. Oh, no. Master Dole and Madame Elia had been invited to a party held by a powerful rival noble. While they were puzzled by the sudden invitation, mm. their would-be host social status left them unable to decline without giving offense. Mm. So they attended the party where they would welcome warmly enough to make them even more suspicious. Oh. They eventually left still puzzled. On their way home, however, their carriage collided with one belonging to a commoner. Oh. Are father and mother okay? The master was hurt, but his injuries are minor. But the madam... Mother, what happened? Her condition is serious. Oh, the surgeon no. of the spiritual church is doing everything they can to save her. Uh, Nene, it'll be okay. The madam wouldn't leave you, Miss Claire. No. Let's trust in the protection of the spirits. I didn't know if I was trying to convince her or myself, but I couldn't think of anything else to say. And so Claire's fourth birthday party came to the worst possible end. <sighs> Madame Elia could not be saved. Her injuries were so severe that Miss Claire wasn't even allowed to see her face mm. again at the funeral. In wake of her mother's death, she shut down completely. Her selfishness disappeared, replaced with Do you a need this tissue. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. A little There's bit. One more. I have one oh, left. God. This hurts. <clears throat> okay. Replaced okay. with a somber maturity that made her seem like a different person entirely. The Francois house was often filled with silence in those days. Miss Claire stayed in her room, gazing out mm. the window. No matter what I said to her, it was like she was somewhere else. If she would always be waiting for Madame, who never came home. <gasps> oh, no. That was just the beginning of her sorrow. Master Joel grew even grizzier, consolidating support to Madame Millet's absence, and Miss Claire was sent away to live with distant relatives. When she was told she was going to be separated from her father, too, she just nodded solemnly. It made me realize how long it had been since I had heard her voice. Miss Claire, how about some strawberries? You didn't eat much at breakfast. Are you hungry? Mm. I showed Miss Claire a basket of strawberries, her favorite, but she just shook her head quietly, not even turning her eyes in my direction. <sighs> Miss Claire, I won't pretend to understand your pain or how you feel, but if you don't eat, you'll get sick, I said. Mm. If I were to die, I would wonder if I could apologize to my mother. Aww. Miss Claire said suddenly as if talking to herself. I was sure the words weren't directed at me, but I couldn't ignore them. <clears throat> I know you're hurting, but please don't talk about dying. That would make Madame sadder than anything. Mm -hmm. I put the basket of strawberries on the table and sat beside Miss Claire. I thought it was dangerous to leave her alone right then. Mm. Claire shut out the windows if she didn't notice I was there, but finally she spoke. I told my mother I hated her. Aww. I, what could I do? How could I heal this wound? The last time I saw my mother, we were fighting. Her eyes were still dry, but she was obviously crying on the inside, forgetting mm. about the differences in our statuses. I embraced Miss Claire. I didn't care if I'd be punished for disrespect. Oh. This I was just afraid that if her. I let go okay. of Miss Claire, I would lose her. Mm. Someone, please help this girl. Please mm. save this delicate soul. Mm. I didn't pray to the god of spiritual church who had failed to return Madame to Claire, but I prayed to someone, somewhere I didn't know. Lene! Lene! I met a prince! Oh? 
my prayers were answered. Miss Claire slowly returned to her old self, partly because apparently she met a prince. I like how they put prince in quotations. The house of distant relatives. This is exactly what I needed. She had been sent to stay with. I didn't know the details, but I was relieved to see your excitement. That's wonderful. What is the name of this fated suitor? I asked. A fated suitor? Yes, please. I would have to thank him for saving her life on this person. Fated suitor, you say? I never thought of my own sister. His name is Minaria! He is wonderful! <laughs> His name is Minaria. <laughs> okay, I needed that. Okay. <laughs> I was stunned. Minaria was one of the daughters of the Larch family. <laughs> Melia's family. A woman not a prince, though, had short hair and was known for her to be tomboyish. Oh, is that so? Can you tell me all about Master Minaria? Master Minaria! <laughs> of course! Minaria is slim and has a beautiful face. Oh! I didn't dare correct Miss Claire about Miss Minaria's gender. What does Minaria look like? Let's see. Oh, well, here's the TV version. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. What is it? Here's TV Minaria. Yay! This is what Minaria looks like then, probably. Except for not in this outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Minaria. I didn't Yay. dare correct Miss Claire about Minaria's gender. She needed something to keep her mind occupied, yes. and I was happy to let that misunderstanding continue or brought her joy. Oh. There are people who tell you that painkillers oh. don't address the root cause of pain. For my part, I believe that some wounds can't be can't wait to be healed. Oh. Still, someday, I pray from the bottom of my heart that the real prince would appear before Claire, oh. and I hoped he would be as wonderful as Minaria, and that he would make Miss Claire's heart race. Mm. At that time, I had no idea that Miss Claire's savior would be not a prince, but a strange commoner girl. Oh. But that's a story for another time. Ooh. And now the afterword. Okay. Is that, should I read that, or is that something? Yeah. Okay. Please. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for purchasing I'm in Love with the Villainous. I'm the author, Inori. This volume consists of the final edited versions of the first three chapters that were posted to the Let's Be Novelists website with a special edition at the end. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Yes. Turning my novel into a published book has been my dream since I was a child. And even as I write this postscript, it still doesn't feel quite real. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful to both the readers of the web novel and those who first read the this story in book form. Your opinions and comments give me such encouragement as an author. Hmm. I have some acknowledgments to make. First, Nakamura-san of the GL Bunko Editorial Department, who put the greatest effort into publishing this book. Thank you for your patience with me, a complete newbie to publishing Hanagata. Thank you for the wonderful illustrations. It is no exaggeration to say that your art brought Ray and Claire to life. To my partner, Aki, you are the reason this book exists. I dedicate this book to you. Aww. Aww. And finally, to every reader who has picked up this book, I offer you my deepest gratitude. Inori, in January 31 of 2019. Wow. Is there something at the end? A picture or something at the very, very end? Uh, it has. A, I'm in love with the villainous. Oh, it's pictures of of other, of other novels. It has a Dachi and Shimamura. Oh, okay. The hidden dungeon. A bunch Only of other stuff. I can enter. Yeah, it's ads for other oh, cool. manga. Dude, and, that and bonus stuff. chapter. Oh my gosh. Why? Oh, we had started this one. Our teachers are dating. Oh yeah. We had started that one. It was cute. Yeah. Yeah. That was so good. I cannot it. wait for the, the second <laughs> volume. Um, but yeah, so yes. that was a lot. Yeah. Uh, that was very intense, honestly, that last chapter, <gasps> for sure, or last part of there that There were book. two parts where I was really tearing up. The goodbye, mm -hmm. and then the yeah. mother goodbye. Yeah, that was, that's so sad. Like, oh my gosh. Four years old. She's, she's only four. Because we don't know who she was, right? Parties. Yeah, she's hosting parties. Uh, she's, like, telling other people what's and up. And then... Ah, like an angel from the heavens. Yeah. Prince Minaria. Yeah. Girl Honestly, Prince. I was like, and then all of a sudden, and then, <laughs> Prince Minaria, like, this is exactly what I needed. She cheered me up as much as she cheered up four-year-old Claire. Yeah, yeah, Aww. no, this was a wonderful journey. Yeah. And we're all glad to have you all with us with yeah, this journey. And definitely sure. can't wait to get to the next one. But, yeah. before we'll be that, nice. we'll be getting into this wonderful... Yeah. Ruby Redman, which will nearly be as long. Yeah. 
Uh, but this is exciting because yeah. it's going to be like stories that are not actually in the show. So mm-hmm. that will be exciting to get into this mm-hmm. world as well. So. And one more time, let's look at this picture. I mean, yeah, it's really great. Uh-huh. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. So sweet. It is really sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, the thing is just th- this book really, like, knows what to do. Because I was wondering, oh, what happened to the flashback when they were younger? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a bonus chapter. Yeah. Just really want to hurt you right there. Yeah. With the bonus chap. Just twist, twist a, knife. a knife. Yeah, just twist a knife. Yeah. yeah no. Oh. Mm-hmm. Very that interesting. Int- oh, go ahead. No. Uh, we might have been talking about the same thing. Interesting perspective to find out that Lene was used to dealing with nobles and that's why because of her father being a merchant yep. and so that's why he she had in her repertoire ways of dealing with nobles yeah. that she was able to pull out and helped her cope with claire yeah what were you gonna say was i it was that gonna or say else? it's very interesting because mm-hmm. we don't really know in the anime mm-hmm. but claire doesn't know who the mysterious black cloud mask man is right yeah. we don't know who he is so mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting mm-hmm. I want to know more about why that is. Also, I have some other thoughts, too, because this is based off of a video game. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else from the real world that's also transferred Mm -hmm. to this game? Mm -hmm. You know, because if there's stuff that she doesn't know, Mm -hmm. how is that to be? Did this masked man just, like, show up? Is Mm -hmm. he, like, playing an antagonist because he also played this game for whatever reason? He's like, hey, listen, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I've got some theories with that one. Obviously, no spoilers as always, but I started thinking. I'm like, she doesn't know this. We're going to get into stuff. I think it's a little bit in volume two is where the anime ends, Mm. and then we'll get to the newer stuff. But it's going to be really interesting. Is Minari going to be there when we start volume two? I'm sure she'll show up because if it's going to go at the timeline, Mm -hmm. Claire's pretty upset about Lene's departure, Mm. and then she gets, you know, the letter from Minaria. So, Mm. yes, Minaria's time will shine. Yeah! In volume two. But first we have Ruby. And then we have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a, another Minaria stand that is also coming from Japan. Who knows when that's going to... It's still, like, under shipping status. Oh, gosh. For, like, two months. So who knows when that will be here. It's been a while for that. It's, it's been a while. To reach out and be like, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Where's my cute Minaria stand? Yes, but in the meantime, I'm looking forward to spending more time with the beloved prince girl. Yeah. <laughs> Just laugh about it. <laughs> I laugh because we got Lene's perspective. It's oh. Like, Monaria. That was funny. She knew. Lene knew and didn't say anything. She was like, well, it's making her happy. I so didn't say anything. Let it happen, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Prince Minaria. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Prince Minaria. Yeah. <sighs> Super excited that when yeah. we pick back up that it's going to be probably there. She'll mm-hmm. be entered into the story at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else to add before we wrap up? It was really good. Uh, yeah. Though a lot of feels, You're looking down for, for sure. Yeah. A lot of feels, but quite a wonderful read, and mm-hmm. we'll definitely be excited to get to the next volume. Hi, Binky. She's <laughs> like, what is that? It's a cat. <laughs> so, yeah, so, mm-hmm. you know. It's a Sundere cat. Appropriate. She is a Sundere cat. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even joking. She is such a Sundere cat. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I'm excited for Minaria. I want to see some Minaria and enjoy reading about Minaria. Did you like this? And see pictures did of Minaria. Did you enjoy this? It had Minaria in that. Yes, I did. Of course I did. But <laughs> I'm being silly. I know. But yeah, there was a lot to enjoy about uh, Volume 1. Yeah. And there was a lot of angst to give me feelings in, in Volume 1. Yeah. And the ending. Um, At least we were ready for what was going to happen yeah. with Lynette and Lambert. So, yeah. like, not really much of that was a surprise no uh but yeah yeah now we're to the other side of it what i'm wondering is is lena gonna come back around because it leaves it open-ended claire tells her take good care of your health and she wants to see her again i feel like i feel like they will see each other again but i think it's gonna take time yeah you know there's Um, a lot of other stuff it's probably whatever i don't know exactly what she's gonna have to like read they're gonna rebuild their lives right Mm -hmm. essentially from like those from the very start so yeah i feel like we'll see her again i don't know maybe towards me the last volume or maybe something maybe in the middle i don't know what i did oh but we'll see what happens yes yes all right thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed watching this part of the book being read then we will have our i'm in love with the villainous playlist pop up on the screen so you can make sure you watch all of the rest of our i'm in love with the villainous videos so far 
We look forward to connecting with you again soon, and we will be sending so much love. Till next time. Laters.